This is Peeling the Orange with your hosts, Mike Mahoney and Colin Alexander. The show where we talk politics using common sense. All right, well, welcome to another episode of Peeling the Orange, and I'm Mike Mahoney. I'm Colin Alexander. So, Colin, uh, I thought we could talk today about um, Proposition 64 uh, that passed a year ago, um, legalizing marijuana, because, well, come January 1st, they'll start issuing the permits and uh, all the sales are going to go live. So thought it'd be an interesting topic to discuss, um, especially um, in light of the time of the year that we're at. And it's coming up to the uh, date that the law goes into effect. So what do you think about it? Um, it passed 56% was a yes vote. So it was pretty close to split. I mean, hey, if it's going to... If it's going to benefit us like it has in other states where they're getting so much money in tax, they don't even know what to do with it, great. But, I mean, California is probably just going to go fund uh, Moonbeam's uh, super high-end underground people. Uh, yeah. I'm still kind of seeing, you know, I still want to see what exactly uh, happens, you know. Well, from, from what I was reading... There's going to be so if you're if you're a recreational user, you're gonna pay a 15% excise tax, and then you're gonna pay the seven and a half percent sales tax. And if you're a medical user, you'll just pay the 15% excise tax. You won't pay the sales tax. So that could mean a lot of money for the state. That could mean a whole hell of a lot of money for the state. And you're right. They got to spend it in the right place. That's the problem. I don't trust that either. Yeah. No. It's. It's. I mean, look at look at how the uh, gas tax turned out. I mean, they've already allotted what thirty million for uh, sanctuary city like attorney fees and all that stuff. So it's like, even if they do say we're going to put it towards this, who knows what's actually going to use it for here? Exactly. I mean, if, Sounds negative, but hey, I mean, how many times are we going to get stabbed in the back before we start actually thinking, you know, hey, maybe it's not as straightforward as they make it seem. Well, it's interesting because I just saw a thing. Um, the city of La Palma last election voted for a 1% sales tax increase, and it was supposed to go to help fund their public employee pension system, which, of course... Every freaking city in California is underfunded. So if like everybody were to retire, they wouldn't have enough money to pay the pensions. Pretty bad situation. And so they estimate that they got like one and a half million dollars over the last year extra. And yet their pension uh, obligation went up by three million dollars. Something's wrong here. Um... So is that going to happen, like you say, is that going to happen with the state? Because I know, we both know that that 12 cents a gallon gas tax is not going to the roads. It's never going to go to the roads. Well, 12, 12 cents gas tax that turned into 38 overnight. I mean, most, most of the gas stations by my house, they went up, they didn't even go up to 12 cents, they went up like 18 to 20 cents. And then by the following, you know, it's about that another 10 you know everyone just figures oh well we're charging on the way well yeah but like well let's talk about let's talk about some of the pros and cons that people had for um for this uh proposition 64 um i'm looking at something right here it's on ballotpedia um it has the if i keep scrolling i'll eventually get to the part where it has Interestingly, I was surprised to see that the Libertarian Party was against this proposition, which sort of shocks me considering their position on legalizing marijuana. It's probably the taxes. Yeah, that's what I think, too. I think the taxes are too high, and 
um, they don't like taxes anyway. But the pros, they say, they say it would um, generate tax revenue and decrease law enforcement costs. Uh, so they can fund things like after school programs, drug prevention, education, and drug and alcohol addiction treatment, better law enforcement training, um, and that's pretty much it. Then people against it say um, it would result in more highway fatalities and more impaired driving, would allow marijuana growing near schools and parks, and would erode local control. The, it would increase black market and drug cartel activity. Um, it would allow marijuana smoking advertisements to be aired. And <laughs> this is always my favorite one. The proposition would hurt underprivileged neighborhoods. <laughs> did, did they actually like read the proposition or did they just like put their heads up their ass and say, oh, look. And the proposition flat out says 21 and over. They can't smoke in public places. They can't smoke in places that don't allow tobacco. And so basically your, your options are you can smoke at home and you can smoke in like a smoking section of a restaurant where they allow you to smoke cigarettes. And uh, actually, no, you probably, I know you might be up in the air with restaurants, but um, you can't smoke. You can't sit there and smoke like, it, it would drive me nuts is I go to the main place mall. And uh, literally that whole area and across the street where there's a market and bowling and stuff, it's just reeks of marijuana and on top because everyone just sits there in public smoking it. So, I mean, there's all that law person. But nobody seems to know the bill. So I can't blame them. Yeah, isn't it interesting, though? Because it's not supposed to be smoked in public at all. I, I actually just reviewed the proposition again yesterday, and it's not supposed to be smoked in public at all. Uh, they say they may come up with, like, smoking areas for it. But I, even Colorado just, gosh, a few months ago opened up their first, like, um, marijuana smoking lounge. And they've been legal for since 2012, so five years. I mean, you still can't smoke while driving, and yet I, I, I'm not even kidding. You drive down the and you will see people literally rolling joints as they're driving. And I'm just like, oh, this is wonderful. Like, you know, hopefully this gets snipped in the bud because I don't, you know. I mean, I'm cool. I'm glad it passed because, yeah, it could really benefit us. But at the same time, I can't stand, like, the hardcore stoners who just are on a constant haze and don't know what they're doing because I just, it irritates the hell out of me to see some of the people like they just will they make my life a million times harder because they decide to show up at my work or do something stupid and I'm just like cool we get to deal with these men. <laughs> well that's the thing that I wonder um you don't do you think it'll be any different than people who drink a little too much alcohol during the day I think I think it's going to be a little different for the fact that it's going to have that novelty for the first year or two. I mean, as soon as it passed, everyone just immediately jumped on the yay marijuana train. Like, you know, it's it, it's one of those, you know, it, it's going to be extra popular. For you know, it's like when you are finally an adult and living on your own, it's like, parents said I can never eat cake for breakfast. I'm going to eat cake for breakfast. And then after about a month of doing that, you're just like, oh, this is why I didn't eat cake for breakfast. So I'm pretty sure you're going to see a lot of weed in public. And that'll continue for a good year or so. And then it'll just, it'll go the way of everything else. It'll just kind of feel and, you know, kind of fall off the, uh, fall off the bandwagon for the yeah, it'll be less obvious. I, yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because they say that um, if you're if you're a medical patient, that you'll that you'll actually pay less, and you don't for your product, and you also don't have to pay the um, seven and a half percent sales tax. You still pay the excise tax, um, and yet 
in order to like right now they'll take any medical marijuana card that's out there and allow them to get the during that first year allow them to get the discounted rate but after the card expires in order to get the discounted rate you have to go to your primary care physician and you have to get a, a prescription from them for the medical marijuana card and then pay they said something like the every county is going to set their own price but the max price is a hundred dollars so since we know we're dealing with the government everybody's going to pay a hundred dollars um yep. and that what bothers me about that is that right now there's no registry of people who are using uh, medical marijuana but as soon as you have to go that route even though they say they're going to protect your information um any government employee would have access to that database and know you know who who is and who isn't using medical marijuana and perhaps use it against them in some way shape or form well i mean yeah I mean, got that you got and there's that's the thing is it's it, i look at it kind of similar to uh like the ammo ban that california enacted where you know you need to have a you know you, you can't buy ammo without a background check and all this extra crap and you're going to get a card and that's why it's going to get issued to you and you're going to show it every time and it's like when when they actually interviewed people they interviewed sheriffs they're like i don't know what the hell they're going to do and then they interviewed another group of people and they're like oh we're going to do this and they interviewed, interviewed another group of people and they're like what the hell are those people talking about we haven't heard anything about that so it's like you got everyone doing their own thing thinking their own plans and you know it's just going to turn into a complete disaster I'm sure you're going to wind up with, you know, okay, well, we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to do this, and none of those agencies are going to talk to And it'll be another two, three years before anyone figures out even what they're supposed to do to begin with. I mean, it's, that, that is our, that is California government. Just pass laws and then figure them out after they're already in effect. Well, even this, the reason, the reason that the proposition had uh you know it passed last november so the reason it had a one a 14 month waiting period is because they had to vet the process for reg registering to sell and manufacture and grow uh marijuana products um yeah. you know you think they would have kind of had an idea of how that was going to work before putting it before a vote but no they didn't they, they spent never. the last year doing that they never do. You know, it's, it's actually pretty sad. It's a joke. It's, it's all a complete joke. I, I've met five-year-olds who are better at planning things than these politicians that have been in government for decades. So, I, I hate to say, yeah, <laughs> marijuana is illegal starting January 1st, and by 2019, we're still not going to know what the hell we're doing. And people are paying weird fees and People are going to take advantage of it and say, oh, well, since you don't have an action system, it's like, this is the system we're going to use, and it's going to cost you an extra $25, and it's going to cost you an extra 50 in registration, and then, you know, I mean, it's, like I said, everyone falls so it's going to be popular, and it's going to die out when they're really freaking complicated. But. Well, right, and, and, I mean, I wonder, I, I also wonder, like, how like hmm, what the penalty is going to be that if you know it's supposed to be 21 and under or over sorry uh what's going to happen if someone goes to the marijuana dispensary and buys like say an ounce and then splits it up among you know a bunch of kids i mean what's the penalty going to be for that that, that that's probably not spelled out either it'll probably be something along the lines of like giving alcohol to a minor contributing to the delinquency of minors but it's California. I mean, felons can vote and all this other bull crap. So I'm sure it'll be like, oh, don't do it again. As they pocket the weed. And they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm, but, not, I'm not trying to bash. I'm not bashing police. I'm, I'm talking politicians. Not, right, right. Oh, I mean. I'm thinking I, I'm like trying to be, you know, anti-police anti right now. 
no, I think they're going to just be banging their heads against the wall trying to figure out how they're even supposed to do. <laughs> well, and especially because I think, uh, and I've already seen like posts on social media where people talk about, oh, there's a bunch of kids smoking pot, and then someone will say, oh, it's okay for them to smoke pot at the park when it isn't. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be the typical um, stupid citizen situation where they've heard that marijuana is legal, so officer, what do you mean I can't smoke while I'm driving my car? I didn't know that. And there's going to be all this drama with people about, you know, the police gave me a ticket and um, I thought it was legal. And you know, they're not going to bother to find out what really is legal. And come on, common sense. You don't smoke well, marijuana and drive just like you don't drink and drive. It's common sense. Well, it's common sense. And, you know, here I am a year and a half out and getting hit. Like, like me and a couple of my coworkers say it. You know, we talk common sense, but it's not that common, uncommon. Right, right. And and what stupid is, and that you bring up a good point. People are gonna say, "Oh, I didn't know." Uh, and you know, we're just they're gonna think that that somehow just justifies them not getting a ticket, and they're gonna cry about how unfair it is and blah blah blah. It's like, uh, no, you you have to know the law. It's not up to someone else to inform you later. I can't say, "Well, I didn't know. I couldn't stab someone in the face." And then expect to get off for it. No, you still go to jail. You still get in trouble. You still get fined. So, I mean, I'm I'm kind of excited for that point because we're going to get to out a lot of idiots. Well, right, and I think you know they say that impaired driving is going to go up. Um, I personally think it's going to stay about the same, but the problem is that it's going to be. You know, percentage of it will be driving under the influence of alcohol, and a percentage of it will be driving under the influence of prescription medications, and another percentage will be marijuana people. Um, I mean, it's it's crazy because um, if you go into a medical marijuana dispensary, uh, a very common thing there is they will after if you make a purchase of a certain amount, they'll give you like a free hit before you leave. Well, what the hell? maybe ask are you driving <laughs> why are we why are we encouraging people to smoke but, and then drive but here's the problem is there's not really last time i checked there's not really an effective system to uh, to really check and see if you're high i mean you can look at the symptoms you know dry eyes and stuff, but there's not an actual like breathalyzer system or anything like that and you I mean, even I don't. I don't think they've found a way to like detect active metabolites in the body. I don't think there's really an active, an active versus inactive or anything like that. It's going to sit there and it's going to store itself in your fat cells, so it's kind of always going to be there. So I mean, they until they figure out a system, you're going to have a lot of impaired driving that's not going to get handled because you really can't. Well, it's gonna. I think it's gonna depend on the officer that pulls the person over. Um, just like with DUI, recognizing the impairment and then pulling them out and doing the sobriety test. Um, yeah. That's really gonna be the only way. And the key here too is that, um, it, it, it even after they do the sobriety test, they usually sort of make a decision about whether or not to make an arrest based off of the breathalyzer because if the breathalyzer is too close to being like under the legal limit they won't even waste their time because by the time they get them did you even know that that the that the yeah. test in the field is not even allowed to be used in court yeah no you have to get you have to actually get a blood drawn that's why when i got hit but what, what really like kicked me off and put a nail in the guy's coffin was he uh he failed the breathalyzer they took him to one ph station the machine was down to, test, to do a blood test so they had to drive to a whole nother station and he still still wound up testing over the legal limit like two and a half hours after that. so you know it's, now they have to take you in and do actual tests versus like the sobriety test in the field and the, the breathalyzer that's just to you know basically give you the ground to arrest them on like quote unquote of drunk driving, right? Then you take them to get actual tests, and that's that's where my thing with it's going to be real hard to pin, you know, DUI on on marijuana because there's no breathalyzer system. You could say, okay, well, you're exhibiting a lot of the symptoms, 
you have the unit with eyes, the car smells of marijuana, you seem very out of it. But if they took them and did blood tests, of course they're going to fail the drug test because, you know, they're going to fail the blood test, they're going to show THC, metabolites, whatever. But, I mean, if you're a heavy user or even just, you know, a fairly frequent user, you're going to constantly, you know, fail any sort of drug test because you're going to have that that in your system, whether you're high or not. So there's, you know, it's going to be a case of, well, your honor, my client smokes every day. He wasn't high when he got pulled over. The blood test shows that he does smoke. It doesn't prove he was high, at, you know, during. So I, I actually read quite a bit into that because that was a huge kind of question I had was, how are you going to bust people for, you know, driving a lot? And basically the short answer was, can't. <laughs> Well, I read something that said the only, the, the most accurate test can only tell them if you've used within the last 14 hours. But like you say, I mean, so you get, let's say someone's on their way to work and they smoked in the morning and they're on their way to work and they get pulled over and they go through the whole thing and then they bring them in and they take the test. Well, yeah, they're just going to say, yeah, I smoked the night before. Yeah. You know, no, of, exactly. of course I did. That's why it's on my, in my blood. I mean, you could like, you could, you know, sit there with like a bag of hot Cheetos and like, a, a, you know, Arizona tea and just set it on the car and see if they go for it. And it's like, okay, well, clearly you're high, but you know, <laughs> I don't think that'll stand up in court either. So, I mean, it's, it's that's the thing is people. I mean, it's such a, a back and forth you know you said you mentioned that one of the cons that people claimed was that it was going to create a bigger black market for drug dealers and cartels um i don't think people understand what exactly the black market is and you can't get something legally then the demand and the availability on the black market pops up when you can't when you can buy something legally very easy to find it. You lose the black market. I mean, you can buy underwear. I don't think you're going to find underwear on the black market because you go to a store and buy it. You know, you're you're not going to find a black market for you know stimulant uh, R, an insulin that you can literally go into any drugstore and say I need to buy this. But you're going to find the black market for prescription insulin because you can't get it without a prescription. Just like there's a black market for Xanax, but not Tylenol, or morphine, but not ibuprofen. I and mean, I don't, right. I don't think you really grasp how it is. If anything, it's going to hurt the cartels. Um, I know I had a, a, a I have a family member who um, they they skipped out, went out of the country for a while because they were living up north and uh, came home. One day after traveling, they they had come back down to California to sell their their marijuana and came home. Their buddy was chilling on the couch watching TV, wasn't responding. Walked around the front of the couch, and his throat was slit ear to ear. And uh, police were like, "Yeah, we think it was a cartel member, you know, because they're pissed off that basically all the growers are taking away their business." So clearly making it legal is pissing off cartels, not making them happy because they're losing money. So, yeah, you're, you're actually going to shut down some of that, that crime and some of the criminal organization behind it. But, I mean, well, I uh, think how, how, how you think open availability is going to make a, a secret demand for it is beyond me. Well, because, I mean, well, there are a couple of points to that. First point would be that I think they've done a really good job over the last year of coming up with a system to keep track of this stuff. In fact, they're purposely making it so that the grower cannot be the distributor and the distributor cannot be a retailer. You have to pick what you want to do. And to me, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, if you want to make some marijuana disappear to the black market and make it a little bit of extra money. So you grow a bunch and you say you're shipping it to this store or a set of stores, but then you have some fall off the back of the truck. 
But with this system, and it would be easy to do because you'd, you'd be the grower, the distributor, and the retailer. But because they're splitting you up, the grower has to register every crop they sell and what you have to barcode it. Then it has to say who it went to. Then those people have to scan the barcode and say where the product went to. And there's a paper trail for where it went to. So I think that's going to help a lot. But the, the second point is just that I think, you know, why would you, if you were, if you, I understand kids under 21, they're going to go and try to get it wherever they can get it. But why would you run that risk as an adult, someone over 21, of going to a street dealer where you can get busted by the police when you could just walk into a store and buy it yeah. with your ID? It doesn't make any sense to me. And and I think I think even the kids, what they're going to do, you're, I think you're absolutely right. I think co- that's going to be like the new way college kids make money. They're going to go... And they're going to buy the marijuana for, you know, $40 for an eighth. And they're going to sell it to the kids for 60 And that's how they're going to make their money. And even the kids, it's safer that way. Because then they bring it into their house. Once it's in their house, no one's, you know, police aren't going to come into their house. There's no point in that. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so I, mean, I mean, I there's ways around it. Or there's ways around everything if you really want to get there. Yep. Oh, yeah, no, Every, every just, law, there's a way around every law if, you, if you're willing to try hard. I just find it interesting because I know, like, anyone who was growing marijuana for medical purposes here in California, they were opposed to this proposition. And their main reason was the registry of medical marijuana cardholders because they say that a lot of people who, especially older people, who use it for things like glaucoma or constant nausea... They're embarrassed to have their name registered somewhere, and they don't want anyone to ever find out that they use marijuana. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, there's 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 plenty of people that use marijuana that will never want anyone to know, whether it's embarrassing or like it's the case of their anti-marijuana while using marijuana, whatever the reason is. But I I don't know I. I think a lot of people just don't want to be in a registered just because they're starting to get that the government's going to take my baby sort of a uh, thing going on, you know, to just assume right. the, the world. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I was reading today that the um, law specifically says that um, possession of marijuana, possession and use of marijuana can no longer be the sole reason um, a parent loses custody of their child. I yeah. think that's a good step. I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, cause I actually know somebody who, um, was addicted to, um, um, opiates and mm. was taking painkillers left and right and was slowly dying. And someone introduced her to medical marijuana and it really takes care of, takes the pain away. She doesn't have to use the opioids anymore. And, however, when she was had to go to a family court hearing, the ex-husband brought up that she smokes marijuana. And, luckily for her, the judge kind of just told her, well, make sure it's secure away from the kids and that they can't get their hands on it and that you don't provide it to them. Um, and as long as you do that, I don't have a problem with it. But, I mean, it could have been a different judge who could have been like, oh, really? Well, I think you're not going to have any custody of your children anymore if that's the case. And, boom. What do you do about it? Yeah, well, see, and that's, that's the problem is you, you, there's got to be a precedent. There's got to be some sort of, of you know, system put in place or whatever sort of policy. And so I, I think it's going to be a very long and interesting few years just with everything kind of adjust. I'm hoping, you know, that the money, the taxes get spent smartly, but... We're a sanctuary state, so it's probably just going to get wasted. Well, I'm fight, fighting federal government and all that crap and trying to make up for money that I'm sure we're probably going to get our federal funding for at some point. So, you know, we're, we're going to probably spend most of it just trying to stay afloat. <laughs> yeah, the financial situation will just get worse. I mean, I'm sure this topic will come up on this show again because as the, um, the licenses roll out and then the stores start popping up, 
Um, I'm sure we're going to have some entertaining, um, humorous things that come up that we'll be able to talk about. But with that in mind, um, tell me what's the what what's something that's been going on? Say like on Facebook, uh, have you had any like really funny uh, um, discussions uh, with anybody lately about anything political? <laughs> I uh, I have some pretty progressive friends that I went to school with way back that are. Uh, very anti pipeline, and I have some. I have I know a lot of people who are very like anti Keystone XL and all that crap. So yeah, I'm getting the uh, hey guys. Remember that this time last year, you know, Americans were being attacked by dogs, were sprayed and beaten by cops because they were protesting a pipeline that's now leaking, and it's like. Uh, no, they were trespassing and interfering with heavy machinery and building homemade bombs. That's why they're getting arrested, and they left enough trash to cause an environmental disaster after protesting for weeks about the risk of an environmental disaster for a pipeline that hasn't even been built yet. So this whole South Dakota pipeline has nothing to do with North Dakota and a pipeline that hasn't been built yet. And of course, it's, well, you don't know what you're talking about, but you know, the point is still the same. <laughs> so yeah, the point is people were committing crimes and getting arrested for it. And, and people were sabotaging the pipeline that is currently leaking. So get off your high horse because nothing you've said has been proven right. Yet. So it's been, it's been a fun couple of days. American Thanksgiving craft, you know, we all the land. And <laughs> just like okay, you know, I've I've read quite a few articles that a lot of a lot of scholars are saying that most of the Native Americans were wiped out by the plague, brought from the south. So when pilgrims actually landed, for the most part, they were inhabiting villages completely abandoned because they were wiped off. So you know, when when Native Americans are taking Vikings after. I don't see how, if they were in full force, I don't see how colonists would have managed to just overwhelm them and abuse them like this. Okay? But, you know, it's, do I listen to the YouTube commenter or do I listen to the, you know, PhD holder in Native American studies? Right. Kind of a tough call here, you know. So <laughs> Common sense dictates you listen to the one with the education regarding it, but it's not common anymore. Common sense nowadays is listen to whoever can Google that. Right, right. Well, like I spent yeah. pretty much a good part of Sunday um, in a Hunt Huntington Beach forum. Um, they were talking about the thousand bicycles that were found in the riverbed near Fountain Valley, but what they don't really tell you is it was actually further up the riverbed in Santa Ana that they found the bicycles. But hey, let's just say it's Fountain Valley so we can blame those people. But I spent a time and I and I actually um, I have a question I like to ask people these days, which is you know if you're if you're on your city council and you're trying to deal with this problem, how do you legally solve the homeless issue and I, I generally don't get answers to that I just get crickets but this particular time a guy answered and then turned it around on me and asked me so I presented my entire homeless plan and this guy spent the entire day telling me because of course as a last-ditch effort to get people off the streets the campground thing that we talked about last time alfresco gardens that is part of the plan but it's like one 15th of the plan and this guy kept saying a campground that's your solution a campground are you high a campground i'm like dude there's a lot more to my plan than a campground a lot more to the plan than a campground i've laid it out for you like multiple times and i don't know i don't understand how it's funny how prevalent this is on social media you run into it all the time i run into it all the time yet Hasn't anybody ever heard of that little arrow on the side that lets you scroll back to read what was said before? Because that kind of solves a lot of these issues. No, no, no. You know? <laughs> but it's too difficult to do, though. Must the answers in front of them. It doesn't exist. Well, right. And if it wasn't said in, like, the last 30 seconds, they don't remember it either. 
And I'm cursed with that. I remember things people said a year ago. I can tell you who said it, what they said, where it was, probably even the time of day that they said it to me. Um, and I'm cursed with that. And just is what it is. So it drives me bonkers that people can't seem to just scroll back a couple of inches and you'll read. I actually posted eight links supporting my idea that you'll save money by housing the homeless. And he says to me, well, you only posted one link. And he shows me a screenshot of the post. And in the screenshot alone, you know, there was a see more. But in the screenshot alone, there were three links. But somehow he thought there was only one, and he was adamant that I only posted one. Again, a um, friend of mine likes to say, you can't go, you can't keep going back to an empty well. And in other words, when you run into someone like that, move on. Just like your situation. You presented the facts, and those people, they don't want to hear the facts, so they, they say you're crazy. Yep. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's easier to tell me I'm crazy than to actually listen. So. Well, then I, I was thinking, you know, that's why I kind of threw this out there tonight. Um, perhaps in our in in our next episode or or one down the line, um, we could find a potentially an Orange County Register thread is always fun, um, but maybe we can find one of these threads where people are just going off, and we can read some of these comments and talk about them because they're hilarious. Totally hilarious. Yeah, I don't uh, know. You know, I think that was an idea you threw out there once before, and I, I think it's it'd be funny. I think it'd be really funny. Yeah, no, I'd, we'd have plenty of shit to talk. Weird. We could probably do like an entire like year worth of episodes just based off that. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of those things we might maybe we want to add that as a segment to this show of like you know stupid social media comments because um, it's like like hey guys warning this is a sixteen hour episode yeah exactly <laughs> or here's volume one here's volume two here's volume three but anyway well all right man well I I don't really ha have much else to add you got anything else you want to talk about nope I mean that's pretty much it. All right, dude. Well, let's wrap it up then. And um, I just want to remind everybody that you can gain access to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play. And if you go to peelingtheorange.net, it's right there with show notes. Uh, if you go look at our first episode, it's got like an outline with exactly where stuff was said. It makes it easy to find what you're looking for. So please subscribe. All right, buddy. Well, I'll talk to you again next time. All right, Mike. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to Peeling the Orange, politics from the common sense perspective. You can find the show archives at peelingtheorange.net. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play so you never miss an episode. Email your questions or comments to podcast at peelingtheorange.net.